In information to those who had removed to America, Ben Franklin tries to dispel several stereotypes of Americans, uh, stereotypes that persisted in Europe at the time, and in some ways even to this day. Um, the idea that Americans uh, might be rich, but we're, we're also kind of stupid, you know, and, and unsophisticated, as Franklin puts it. He finds it as imagined by numbers that the inhabitants of North America are rich with all sorts of ingenuity, uh, but that they are at the same time ignorant of all the sciences, and consequently that Americans needed Europeans to come and teach them you know, and run things, you know, teach them science and the arts and so forth. Franklin does say a couple paragraphs later that, that Americans are more practical and interested in what, what is useful what, rather than what is simply, quote, curious or su superfluous. And for that reason, he, he claims artists uh, would have a harder time selling their, um, their works of curiosity in America than, than elsewhere. Um, but as, as far as the stereotype that Americans were rich, Franklin says that that's not necessarily the case, that, that what he highlights is the middle class. He says the truth is that though there are in that country, in America, um, few people so miserable as the poor of Europe, there are also very few, very few that in Europe would be called rich. It is rather a general happy mediocrity that prevails. And when he says mediocrity, he doesn't mean it in the pejorative sense that mediocre is being not up to par, but um, it actually means material equality. He's, again, talking about the middle class. Um, and, you know, we're going to see um, in Crevacour, uh, makes a very similar point. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to, to highlight in, in this um, information of those who had removed to America, um, Franklin points out that one of the reasons um, America was thriving was because of the, the lack of bureaucracy uh, that had taken a stranglehold in, in the you know, older societies. Man, I wish we could still say the same. Um, unfortunately, I think we, we are awash in bureaucracy these days. But at this time, at the, the beginnings of the nation, um, there, there wasn't this giant bu bureaucratic state. Excuse me. He says, of civil offices or employments, there are few. No superfluous, no super, superfluous ones as in Europe. And it is a rule established in some of the states that no office, no office should be so profitable as to make it desirable. And that, that was the founding ideal that, that, that the founders did not intend, according to what you see in their writings, they didn't intend for there to be career politicians, really, like we see today. It was, you know, Jefferson called government a necessary evil. The idea was, like, like Jefferson, to serve in public office for for a period of time, but then to to get out of uh, politics. And in Jefferson's case, he went back to farming. And we've come a long way from um, from that ideal. Um, another um, thing what we see in this um, in this article that we saw in in Franklin's Way to Wealth is he's, he's Proud of the fact that in, in America, um, the aristocracy had not taken hold as it had in, in Europe. Um, that people were judged by merit rather than birth uh, in America, according to Franklin. So he says, much less is it advisable for a person to go thither who has no other quality to recommend him but his birth. In Europe, it has indeed its value but it is a commodity that cannot be carried to a worse market than that of America, where people do not inquire concerning a stranger, what is he, but what can he do? If he has any useful art, he is welcome. And if he exercises it and behaves well, he will be respected by all that know him. <clears throat> and uh, along those same lines, Franklin says something 
uh, in the next paragraph that, that is a really important principle in, in the American system, and that is, um, let's see, he says, uh, strangers are welcome because there is room enough for them all, and therefore the old inhabitants are not jealous of them. The laws protect them sufficiently so that they have no need for the patronage of great men. What he's referring to there is, in, you know, in, in Europe, um, if you broke the law, um, if, if you if you had powerful people on your side, you know, you, you could kind of... Um, you know, get away with it. Um, likewise, if, if you were wrongly accused, um, you were out of luck if you didn't, you know, have powerful connections. Franklin is saying that uh, that, that wasn't so much the case in America. Um, it, it's really, um, this essay was published in 1784. Um, four years earlier, John Adams, the president at that time, I made a famous statement. He says, um, in America, we are a government of laws, not men, right? That, that rather than have unequal justice based on who you know, the, the law was what mattered. Uh, again, that was the ideal. We haven't always lived up to it perfectly. And again, I would say, I mean, we can see egregious exceptions to, to that principle you know, in our day as well. Um, if you're a, you know, powerful enough um, a politician, uh, particularly one who is, um, you know, loved by the mainstream media and so forth, you can seemingly get away with anything. Um, but at least we, you know, we have that principle uh, in our past and still in some people's minds, nation of laws, not men. <clears throat> All right. Um, so if we go to the, the last couple of paragraphs of, of this essay, um, actually the last paragraph, Franklin says, the almost general mediocrity of fortune that prevails in America, again, the middle class, obliging its, its people to follow some business for sub, subsistence those vices that arise usually from idleness are in a great measure prevented. Remember we saw in the last mini lecture, um, Franklin really uh, promoted the Protestant work ethic. Um, again, that was a term that wasn't coined until later, but, but the idea that if, you're, if you are industrious, if you stay busy, not only will that you know, bring you wealth, but it will keep you out of trouble. Uh, it's like, what is the old adage? Idle hands are the devil's playground. So Franklin is saying here, um, the, especially, you know, that young people don't get in, into as much trouble as in, in Europe where there's, there's more idleness uh, because there's more established wealth and, and so forth. Uh, industry and constant employment are great preservatives of the morals and virtue of a nation. Hence, bad examples to youth are more rare in America, which must be a comfortable consideration to parents. Um, also, he says, to this may be truly added that serious religion under its various denominations is not only tolerated, but respected and practiced. Atheism is unknown there. Infidelity, rare. By infidelity, he means lack of religious uh, belief in secret so that persons may live to a great age in that country without having their piety shocked by meeting with either an atheist or an infidel. And the divine being seems to have manifested his approbation of the mutual forbearance and kindness with which the different sects treat each other. Uh, we're going to see Crevy Coors making a, uh, makes a, a similar observation in letter three of his letters to the American letters from an American farmer. She says they're, you know, people of different denominations, different beliefs, but they, you know, kind of mind their business and respect each other. Uh, by, the remark by the remarkable prosperity with which he has been pleased to favor the whole country, with which the divine being has been pleased to praise the whole country. So th these days you'll, you'll find some people trying to 
argue that the founders, including Franklin and Jefferson, particularly Franklin and Jefferson, were, were somehow anti-religious. When you read their writings, you, you, you see that's simply not the case. Franklin was not a, an Orthodox Christian, per se. Um, he was uh, a deist, uh, someone who believed in God, but basically believed God created the world and then kind of stepped away. And, um, you know, like he, the, the metaphor it's often used to, by deist is the, the universe is like a, a big watch or clock that God uh, wound up and now he's letting it run. But clearly, uh, Franklin uh, thought that a belief in God was central uh, to the American experience.